What about the people who do not recognize God by Krishna's mercy? Quote, One cannot speak this way without having been well trained in the Rig Veda, memorized the Yajur Veda, and thoroughly understood the Sama Veda. Lord Rama speaking to Lakshman about Hanuman, Valmiki Ramayan, Kishkindakand 3 Bantui 8. You use the incident of the first meeting between Sri Hanuman and Sri Rama as kindly preserved in the historical Sanskrit poem known as the Ramayana as evidence of the qualities in the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In fact, this is supposed to be proof of the very existence of God based on the spontaneous reaction from Hanuman. That dedicated messenger, Duta, representing the interests of the Varna leader named Sugriv, composed beautiful praise without prior thought. This was based on simply meeting Rama and his younger brother, Lakshman. Supposedly, this is how to tell you are in the presence of transcendental greatness, just as one might be moved to tears in witnessing the self-sacrifice of the mother towards her child, the beautiful vision of a wonder of nature or the greatness of someone in general, there is something inside which changes when dealing directly with God, the person. That sounds well and good. I will not argue against the theory. The question I have is about the people who have a similar experience but lack the same response. They are not moved at all. In fact, they might become more antagonistic. Their atheistic stance digs deeper into the ground. If it was firmly entrenched before, it is now like a pillar which finds added support. They believe more than ever that the believers are the crazy ones, that there is no God ruling over the entire universe. You have the Rakshasa leader named Rawan meeting the same Rama. You have the incident with Poundraka described in Pagvat Puran. Today, you have the people who visit the temple observe the deity, and do not come away with a change of heart, while the regular attendees see the same deity and immediately shed tears. How do we account for the difference? Why should we use the experience of Hanuman as evidence of divinity while ignoring the continuation of sinful behavior in Ravan? The explanation is simple. There must be some kind of qualification. There must be some level of maturity. We already have experience with this in our daily lives. A youth might have no interest in an automobile. You tell them of innovations like a rearview camera, an overhead camera, and intelligent controls to help with parallel parking, and they have no idea what you're talking about. They could very well witness these features in action and still have no appreciation for them. It is not until they have a little maturity, gain some experience in driving a car, that they come to be impressed. They might be so impressed that they decide to study cars for a living. They appreciate more and more. That which they previously ignored is now the focal point of their working day. It may appear that Ravan was not moved, but that is not the case. He was actually a devoted soul, having descended from the Vaikuntha realm due to a curse. He was a devotee of Rama, but acting out that devotion through antagonism. In fact, a close associate to Ravan had tremendous appreciation for Rama. Though Mariksha was on the other side, though he was an attacker against the innocent, he provided some of the best praise we can find of that celebrated eldest son of King Dashrat. Avjanannaham mohadbalo yamiti raghavam, vishwamitrasyatam, vedimabhyadhavam kritatvaraha, tena muktastato barnaha, shita shatruni barhanaha, tena ham twahataha kshipta samudre shatayojane. Quote, being under the influence of illusion, I underestimated Rama and took him to be a mere child. 
Thus I ran towards Vishvamitra's sacrificial altar. With that, Rama released an acute arrow capable of destroying his enemies. Upon hitting me, that arrow forcefully threw me away to an ocean one hundred yojanas, eight hundred miles away. Maricha speaking to Ravan, Valmiki Ramayan, Aranya Kand, 38-19. His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada explains that the non-devotees will only see the material elements used in the construction of the deity. They are not yet interacting with God the person. They may also hear transcendental sound, Shabda Brahman, but are not influenced. It is like receiving an important message over the radio, but not understanding due to lack of familiarity with the language spoken. Shri Bhagavan Uvach Idam Tute Guhyatamam Pravakshamya Anasuyave Gyanam Vigyana Sahitam Yajatva Mokshase Shubhat. Quote, the Supreme Lord said, My dear Arjuna, because you are never envious of me, I shall impart to you this most secret wisdom, knowing which you shall be relieved of the miseries of material existence. Bhagavad Gita 9.1 It is for such reasons that there is a discipline known as Vaidhi Bhakti. It is for making the qualification. Shastra carries forward conversations with disciples who are already qualified. For instance, Arjuna could hear Bhagavad Gita which contained confidential truths because he was not envious of Krishna. Through purificatory rites, samskaras, and dedication to sadhu, shastra, and guru, we have the potential to reach the same level of qualification, after which we can appreciate Sri Rama without end. In closing, to appreciate without end, an initial meeting to extend, since remembering so into those glories to go. Like Hanuman, culture to exemplify, to understand, properly qualified, with barely few moments screening, praise in presence of Rama meaning.